So how to find gold is by far more important than where to find gold. But a beginner's question is always, where am I going to find the gold? That's a lot easier, really, because gold is generally spread out over a pretty wide area anywhere where gold is present. Now, here in gold country in California, there's a long strip about 200, 300 miles wide that runs from way up north to way down south of where I am. So the key isn't so much where it is as getting to the exact spot and trying to find a convenient one. So what I'm doing is I take the truck, load up the stuff in the back that we're going to need for the day, mostly a pan and a scoop, but I also take the metal detector and some other stuff along in case I decide to work. And we just go and stop at every place the water crosses the road, even a dry creek bed, because even though it's dry, it might still have gold in it part of the year and run down the stream. So we'll scoop up some dirt out of there and sample it. Here we've got a nice little creek alongside the road. I've never been here before, so I don't know what's down here. But we're going to go down in here, check some random spots, and see what we find. It's a little cold today, and so we didn't go out and walk in the regular river because we figured the day would be much better spent driving around and finding other spots to work in some other day. So today we're not going to be looking for a lot of gold. All we're going to be doing is driving around, sampling each spot, and remembering which place had the good gold, and we'll come back and work it properly some other day. So you're going to spend some gas and some time doing this, but it's well worth it because this is how you find out where the gold is and where it's concentrated. Most people just go down to the local state park, work the same place everybody else works, and they don't find hardly any gold because they're working places that have been worked too often. So we go out in the boonies, along back roads, and that's what we're doing here. So follow me down the river and see what we can find. So if you look at the river here, you'll see that the water comes down and settles into a big pool after each group of rocks. Now it's going to run a little differently when there's a lot more water in the river, but this is close enough for our purposes. Down here is a promising looking spot because it comes over this big rock here, settles around like this, and like this, and drops here. And there's some nice dirt down there I can get at. So I'm going to take my scoop, and we're going to try to scrape some of this in here. Try to get your pans about the same each time you do this, and so you have some relative idea of how much gold you're finding for a given amount of dirt. And the more dirt you get in there, the better your sample is going to be. So now we're going to sample pan this process here. Shake it around really good. Pull the biggest of the rocks out. And then scrape off the top. The whole point of this day is to get a lot of dirt processed and see what's here. And so it's okay to risk losing a little bit if it gets us done twice as fast, because that means we can move on to the next creek and sample more rivers today. Let me get down to the bottom like this, settle it really well, and then just switch around. A little slower now. One, two, three tiny specks of gold. So this is not a river I would consider worth coming back to. So if you want to be thorough, you can check another couple of spots around here or there or there or whatever. But I'm in a hurry, and if I don't find anything more than that in my first pan, I'm not usually going to pursue it. Especially from a pretty good spot like this. So now we're going to drive on to the next river. So here we are at another little creek alongside the road. It crosses under the road here through a culvert, and it flows a little bit right now. I'm sure certain times of the year it flows a whole lot more. And I don't know if there's any gold here or not, but that's kind of the whole point. This part here looks pretty good. It also looks like somebody else has been digging here because there's some dirt laying around. But I'm going to look at this spot right here. This little hole, if any gold got in here, it would probably not come out again. Doesn't look like there's much dirt in there, so we'll move it on. Here's some dirt underneath this rock. There's one slightly larger piece of gold here and some smaller flakes, but still not enough to consider walking here. So 
so we're doing some sample panning along the road here, and I found this nice culvert. Now this is a concrete culvert, but what's interesting about it is that it's got layers of ledges. Come on down here and take a look at it. So when they built this, they tried to make it so that the water wouldn't just rush out through here. But what they did was they accidentally built a great sluice. See right here, a big concrete beam. Down there is another one. There's about a foot of water down in here, and most of this is clean. But when you get down to this bottom edge, there's about two or three inches deep by about a foot wide all the way along here. Now if gold fell down through here, if there's gold in this stream, and I've already found a little bit, so I know there's some, then it would come down here, get stuck right here, and very little would go to the next one. And by the time you get to the end of it, it's going to pick up mostly all the gold that's ever going to run through this culvert. And that means that right here, it's going to be like cleaning out a sluice for us. So we're going to dig down here with our bucket and see what we find. So I'm treating this just like a crevice, and I'm just cleaning it out, and if I find enough gold in here to make it worthwhile, I'll go ahead and even use the sucker rubber to get it cleaned out. This creek did not have enough gold in it when I sampled it to be worth working, but because it's already concentrated here, there's a good chance that even though a random spot doesn't have enough gold to be worth working, working these highly concentrated pieces right here may well be worth our time. So now we're going to pan this out and see if there's anything in here. So there's one little piece I got out of here. And there's another little piece. It's kind of hard to see them on camera. So even with the natural sluice, this creek is not worth working. That's not enough gold out of two pans to keep me here for very long. But I'm showing you all this, even my mistakes and even the places that don't work out very well, because I want you to see a real perspective of what we're working with. A lot of the videos you see on YouTube when they pan out a pan out of their creek, most of the time they're salting it and putting gold in there, so you're seeing their entire year's worth of gold coming out of that one pan, thinking, wow, why is nobody doing this? Well, the reason why isn't doing it is because most pans that you dig, you're lucky to get what I just showed you in this pan. Until you find a good creek and do some real leg work, finding out where everything is, it takes time to get all that figured out. So, this is realistically what you're going to find if you go sampling along the creeks like I'm doing here today. So we're not sampling. We've come to this river now. And this area has been working very, very well. I mean, they have cleaned out the crevices thoroughly all the way along here. There's big piles of rocks where people dating back 100 years have just piled up piles of tailings. So this has been worked to death. But there's still gold to be found here because this was a very rich area. All of these crevices here have been worked out. You can just look down in them and see that there's nothing down in there. But I found one crevice here that had some fresh dirt in it that hadn't been dug out for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe this rock had slid off. This rock here is a piece of bedrock that broke off long ago and came down and covered this up. And so this would not have been an easy place for people to get under and work. And in sampling just now, I found a couple of very nice pieces of gold. Like you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and work this out because this shows some real promise. For half a pan or so, I found two really, really large flakes and kind of thick too. And I didn't even go to the bottom of the crevice because that was just sampling. So I'm going to get my tools over here and I'm going to clean this out properly now. And that's basically what we're doing. We're just looking for places that have some good promise and then we work there for a while and if we don't like it, we move on. I like this spot, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit more time. But the thing is, we had to go through a lot of work to find this place. And we're not the first people ever to be here, of course, because as like I said, it's been worked to death. But there was so much gold, and we're far enough out in the woods that not everyone gets out here. We're on the end of a four-wheel drive road, probably 20 or 30 miles from the nearest serious town. So you had to actually want to come out here to get out here. And it's not like it's just a downtown city park where everybody just spent every afternoon. So combination of going on the other side of the creek, because the day use area is over there, so I went to the extra effort to walk across the creek where a bunch of people didn't bother to go to, going a little farther up the bank and looking for places that people haven't worked, and that's how you find gold in these places. You just got to be willing to go farther than the next guy will. So now I'm going to walk this for a while and we'll see what we find. So I panned out a bucket load of dirt, about five gallons of it, and ironically, I got more out of the first two pans, half pans, than I did out of the whole five gallon bucket. So I don't quite know what happened there, but there was some good stuff there. But when I got down to the bottom, it really didn't follow through. So maybe it just washed in there from somewhere else. So I guess I'm going to keep walking somewhere else around here. So I moved on, and I moved up on this bank here, and I found a hole that somebody else had dug. I always like working behind other people because they do a lot of the work for you, and they get you closer to the bedrock and where the gold is. And then you can come along behind and sort of scrape off the walls and get a pretty good idea of what they found. And especially if it's a larger hole, you know they must have been getting something, or else they wouldn't have kept working in that same hole. So up here I found a nice hole like that, about four foot around. I can't bring you over here because the camera is on the other side of the creek. But um, I worked there for a few minutes and I got about a five gallon bucket full of dirt. And out of that, I got this much gold in my pan. 
Now I consider that to be just barely worth working for a day's work. In other words, I could do that all day and I'd get maybe a gram or so out of that. Not the best spot ever, but by the time I actually get to bedrock, I might find more down there or so. Considering it's pretty close to the surface where I'm digging, probably worth pursuing. So I'm going to work on this spot again some other day, I think. So I'm going to write this down as my maybe pile to come back to someday. Because really, this is just for sampling today. I'm just trying to find out spots like this to come back to some other day when the weather's a little bit better.